Hi, I just wanted to make a quick video that I thought would be helpful to post on the internet. Um, I'm always going up on the internet for looking for things that are that are helpful, and uh, I thought I'd make a video that um, would describe a little bit about installing a portable generator and the use of an interlock device instead of a transfer switch. <clears throat> a lot of people are dead set that transfer switch is the only way to go. Um, that I found that really wasn't the case, at least for me, because the transfer switch only allows you to use six circuits, um, sometimes eight, and the most I saw was a ten circuit transfer switch. Um, so that gives, it's kind of limited in, in terms of what you can run in your household. With the, uh, with the interlock device, it allows you to use any breaker, use any uh, of your outlets, any, anything in the house at all. Obviously, depending on the size of your generator, you can't run everything, but you can run any specific breaker that you want, as long as you keep the uh, the uh, the load rating down to what your generator can support. So uh, let me start with the generator. Um, okay, so this is the particular generator that I opted for. I bought it at Home Depot. I thought it was a pretty good size generator. I like the features that it had. You know, it's portable. It's got rails on the back so that you can slide it um, up a step or something like that. Uh, it's about 7 kW. Of course, you know, they have the 6800 running watts, 8500 starting watts. It runs for about 12 hours on the uh, 8 gallon fuel tank that it has. I think that's at 50% uh, load, if I'm not mistaken. The gener here's the generator cord. I made this one myself. Went down to Home Depot. They have this this kind of cord on a spool. Um, I probably did a little too much. I probably would have uh, gone with a shorter length if I had it to do over again. But anyway, uh, this is a water resistant type cord. I can't remember what they uh, they actually call this, but it's a 10 gauge uh, cord. It's easy to coil up bought these plugs on the internet. These are NEMA 1430 uh, 30 amp twist lock plugs. You've got a male on this side that plugs into the receptacle in the generator and then this side plugs into the inlet receptacle that I installed on the side of the house. And I'll show you that right now. Okay, so this is the outdoor weatherproof receptacle that I installed. So when the power fails, what I'll do is I'll wheel the generator outside and I can shut the door and run the plug, the generator plug, from there over to this receptacle. And that way, you know, I'm not, I don't have any windows open or anything like that. Pretty nice. I bought this on the internet. I can't remember how much I paid for this. I think uh, 40 bucks or something like that. Um, it's a, again, it's a 1430 NEMA rated uh, receptacle. And it's not ever energized. This is uh, wired to a back feed breaker in the panel and I'll show you that. This is the wire that I used to wire the receptacle back to the breaker panel. It's, it's a 10-3 wire. It's pretty heavy gauge stuff. It's pretty stiff. It's, uh, it's three wires plus the ground and this is, uh, this is the type of wire that you want to use for the 30 amp capacity. I'll show you. Uh, we'll go back to the panel at this point. Okay, so I'm going to talk rather quickly so I can keep this video short. But the, again, the point of this was to show that there was an alternative to a transfer switch. Um, I, rather than installing a transfer switch that was expensive uh, and, get, and limited your uh, options for what circuits you could run, I opted for the interlock. Um, my panel is made by Square D, so I got the interlock that's made by Square D. It's a, I have a QO type breaker system. I checked with the Maryland inspector and as long as the interlock device is manufactured by the same uh, company that you made your, your uh, distribution panel, you're fine. It's uh, UL listed and uh, it's completely safe. So. The 10-3 uh, the line that I ran in comes in to the top of the panel. 
and feeds this breaker right here. It has to be in the two and uh, the two and four positions in the top right so that this interlock device will work. And the way this works is in order to turn this back feed breaker on, you have to turn off the main supply breaker to the house. Once I turn this off, I'll be able to slide this mechanical uh, plate up and then I'll be able to turn the back feed breaker on. So when the power goes out, the sequence of operation is you secure the main breaker, then you turn off all the branch circuits, every single branch circuit, turn them off. Then uh, I would go outside, I would start the generator, plug it in, and come back to the panel, I would turn the back feed breaker on, and then what I would do is I would start turning on the individual circuits one by one. Now I've pre-marked all of my circuits that I know that I would use in the event of a power outage. That'll save me some time rather than have to, you know, <clears throat> have some guesswork. I just marked them all with X's and I also took the step of measuring each circuit with an amp clamp ahead of time <clears throat> with, all, with everything I could turn on in the house. Uh, that way I could get a better idea of, of what each circuit would draw realistically in the event of a power outage. And I recorded that on this, uh, this plate here that I have. Um, I did this in Microsoft Excel. It's basically a layout of all the circuits in the panel, the positions, and then the, uh, the whether or not I would select them in, in, in the power outage. It's called Gen Select, and then the amp draw. In some cases, I put the uh, the peak draw. For example, on the well pump, it starts up, has a it draws 12 amps on startup, and then stabilizes at 6.3 amps. Okay. Okay, I've removed the cover, the, the dead cover, off of the panel just so I could show that the interlock kit comes with this plate right here that screws in and holds this back feed breaker tight. Um, what I, when I ran this 10-3 wire in, I, uh, I, I wanted to, uh, one of the advantages on the transfer switches is they have these, the meters that show you what each, uh, what each side is drawing, each phase. And so I wanted that. I wanted to have that. So I, I bought this box. This, it's a watt meter box online. And the way it works is it has these CTs, these little donut-looking devices, and they just slip around the wire um, each of their, your phases. And that way um, you can tell, you know, what how much each side is drawing. And the point is, is you want to try to balance those as much as possible. You you won't get it exact, but the closer they are together the better off you'll be because your generator will will run more efficiently um, so that's that's pretty much it I there's a ground uh, screw in here and what I did is I bonded the ground here to the ground bu bus uh, inside the panel here the way this is grounded and it's butted up against the, uh, the side of this panel as well that's it Okay, I put the cover back on the panel, and I wanted to also show that they shipped the interlock kit, and it comes with this little placard, and I, I like this because it actually says right here, it says, Generator Interlock Kit, gives the catalog number, it says, Suitable for use in accordance with Article 702 of the National Electric Code. So, I put that on the inside cover, and it also has a, uh, a schematic. So the other thing that I thought was a really good idea, I saw online a guy had installed a, a transfer switch and he took the additional step of putting in an emergency light. Um, I bought this one from Lowe's and it has a battery inside of it so it's always charging. But in the event of a power outage, it comes on automatically. I thought that was a really good idea. So it has two lights. I, I positioned it like that so that one side would shine on the panel itself so I could see what it's doing, and the other side illuminates the, the way down to the panel. So I'll kind of demonstrate real quick. I'll turn the breaker off. Turn the breaker back on and it goes out. Um, I, I like that feature. It was nice and inexpensive um, and a lot of benefit. So. That's it. Again, uh, if you're looking to install a portable generator at your house, uh, you don't have to use a transfer switch. Some people swear by them. Uh, in my case, I thought the interlock was the way to go, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So, thanks a lot.